Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ben. Welcome to the Swanky Cat Productions channel. Today we're going to talk about the Bluetooth communicator that I've been using this season. So about four months ago, FOD Sports sent me their M1S Plus communicators. This is their top of the line communicator right now. This has a ridiculous amount of features, but it is about twice the cost of the communicator that I've been running for the past, I think, four or five years. And that was the BTS2 Bluetooth communicator. You actually can pick these up on the FOD Sports website. I will have a link down in the description. They originally wanted to give me part of the commission. I generally don't like to do that. I will talk to them and see if I can get the code that you'll be using, Swanky Cat. I'll see if we can get that switched over so you guys get my percentage of that. I'll have information on what the actual discount is down in the description. Make sure you check that out. Again, that is code SwankyCat. So this is a real basic communicator. I think you can only connect two or three riders with these, and they really don't have any features other than listening to the radio, which never really worked all that great. You can, of course, link it to your phone, and if you guys are unfamiliar with a Bluetooth communicator or how they work, they've got speakers that go on each side of the helmet, and they also have a boom mic that goes up by your mouth here. You can take or make phone calls on them, like I said, you can talk to other riders within a Bluetooth wavelength range, and they're just really a great thing to have on a ride. So that BTS2 communicator, I think, is about 50 bucks. These are right around uh, just about 100, I think, with tax anyways. You can pick them up in a two-pack for a bit cheaper, and this model can connect actually up to eight riders, and it also has kind of a neat feature where you can share music to another rider. The thing is, with both of those things, um, kind of good and bad, that all gets routed through just one communicator. So if you have friends that do not have this specific communicator, the good news is you can share music with them and you can connect up to seven other riders, but they all get routed through this, which means you're the only one that has control over that. So if another rider, say, pauses the music or pauses the conversation, or if you shut your communicator down, it all kind of goes out the window. The other thing that I was initially kind of excited about and, and now sort of disappointed about is that when you're sharing music, you actually are not able to continue the conversation. It is only sharing music. You don't have that link between the two riders. In order to talk to the person again and shut the music down, you'd have to pause it on this communicator. And if the other person was to pause it, I think you kind of actually have to relink the music then and it's a little glitchy. But if you try to use it as intended, it actually works pretty slick. Now, I honestly don't know what the range capability was with the old communicator, but with both of these linked together and my wife standing at the end of the driveway with this one on and me riding down the road, I made it about 0.2 miles before we lost communications. And the kind of odd thing was, this one seemed to cut out before this did. She couldn't hear me, I could still hear her. And I'm not really sure what that's about, but it actually seems like this one that I've got in the MX helmet is kind of glitchy once in a while. I'll be riding down the road or the trail and my music will just kind of cut out on me. So I'm not sure what that's about. I don't know if there's an actually an issue with this. Maybe just the firmware needs to be updated. I'm not really sure. So this next part, I'm gonna pull this off real quick. That is pretty easy to do. I've got the mount that actually just uses some VHB tape on the back of it to stick it right to the helmet so there's no clamp or anything to worry about. I definitely trust that VHB tape. I've used it for a lot of different projects and I've never had it fail on me. So to get it off, I'm just gonna push this tab and then this will pop right off. I've never had this come off when I didn't want it to if I actually had it on there properly, and you do have to make sure when you go to stick it back on that you pull that tab all the way over. So my old communicator still had this sort of oddball connection that the BTS2 Bluetooth communicators used to have. You can now get them with a USB-C connection, and that's what these new communicators come with is a USB-C connection. I was really excited to see that, however, I was pretty disappointed to find out that you are not able to use just any old USB-C connection. You have to use their special one. And that's because this plastic portion has a step down to fit inside of the slot. So as nice as it is that they're using a standard plug, you still can't use anything but their special cord. Another thing that I was a little bit disappointed about is that while it did come with this cable and this nice little friendly reminder here, it did not actually come with the portion that you plug into the wall. And I looked at most of the stuff that I've got laying around and the majority of it was well over this one amp threshold. Luckily I had this old Samsung charger laying around that is slow enough that it was still able to charge this. I don't know how big of a deal it would be to charge something with more power. I have a feeling that it probably would eventually hurt the battery. I don't know what my old communicator recommended. I have a feeling it was probably about the same and I've always charged that on just anything that I've had laying around. And like I said, the majority of the stuff that I've got laying around is definitely pushing more than an amp. For instance, these little plugs that go into a cigarette style 12 volt outlet and convert them to USB put out, 
Come on, camera. Two amps on both sides. So essentially what I'm saying is I will not be able to charge this when I'm out on the road unless I guess I find a less powerful version of this. The good news is though, once you've got these things charged, they seem to last for a long, long, long time. Usually I charge them after every ride just to kind of keep the battery at that 100% mark. You kind of want to do that with any type of battery. You don't really want them sitting around half charged or less. But the one on my motorcycle helmet, I've got I think four or five decently long rides on and it has yet to die on me. I don't know how much more I'll get out of it. Obviously, like I said, it's better to keep them charged up, but it seems like you could go for a long time running music, talking to other riders. I would assume that having eight riders on one communicator would kind of drain your battery a little bit faster. I have not been able to test that. That would be my guess though. But for everything that I've done with these so far, it seems like they've lasted a heck of a long time. Now, as far as the mic and the speakers go, I honestly cannot say that I've noticed a huge improvement on this new communicator versus the old one, which is kind of saying a lot since this is double the cost. I do think that this one links up with my phone and with other communicators just a little bit quicker than this one does. But keep in mind, this is four or five years old and I've never updated any of the firmware on it. Now, of course, the speakers in the mic are not top of the line, but just because this is not extremely better than my old communicator doesn't mean that I don't think they're sufficient. I think they actually sound pretty darn good and the communication quality between them has always been, I would say, excellent. I can hear these speakers just fine when I'm running 70 miles an hour down the freeway. I actually like to run earplugs and with this turned all the way up, I can definitely hear everything more than clear enough. I could maybe see it being able to get a little bit louder, but even turned all the way up, it's plenty loud. It's not like I can't hear anything or I'm constantly trying to turn it up at all. It's definitely sufficient. The other thing I've noticed about this communicator versus the old one is that it is slightly more user friendly. Obviously, you kind of have to read the owner's manual or watch some videos in FOD Sports. It actually has some great videos on their YouTube channel showing you how to link stuff up. It's not a whole bunch of talking at the beginning or anything like that that you get with a lot of YouTube videos. It's just right to the point, so they're definitely worth checking out. I've referenced them on the trail quite a few times already, and I've never really had an issue with these. Other than the fact that the one that I've got on my MX helmet doesn't really seem to link up with a communicator that my dad has. Now it seems kind of specific to that communicator. This one I can always connect to it, so I'm not sure if it's something to do really with his communicator. If it is something to do with that one, it seems like it's kind of a weird combination of the two. Other than that though, like I said, I've never had any issues connecting or figuring out how to run a certain feature like the music sharing after I've reference those YouTube videos. Now I've been recommending these for years and I have to say honestly at the end of the day if you're not looking for all the features that this thing offers I would still recommend this. This is half the cost. It does everything that this does as far as connecting you to another rider and getting you in communication with them or connecting to your phone, being able to listen to music, being able to make calls, being able to receive calls. It just works and for the price, you just cannot beat it. But if you're looking to connect more than two or three riders, if you want to be able to share music between riders, then I think this is a really nice option. Like I said, I've had no issues with it. I really like how it connects to the helmet, the speakers, the mic, everything goes in really well. They are a little bit bigger than these, but I've had no problems getting them in either of my helmets. And I have to say at the end of the day, I think it's a great headset. It's definitely worth the upgrade if you're looking for something that has more features. Either way, I'll have links for both of these down in the description. When you go to purchase them, again, make sure you use that code SwankyCat for a discount. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, stay safe, stay swanky, get out, enjoy this beautiful world any chance you get. And if you can't do that right now, here's some more videos to check out in the meantime.